Hello and welcome to Fox Gaming. In today's video I will show you an easy way to paint Rangers of Gondor for Middle Earth strategy battle game. The result is as you can see subtle with some detail for a close up look but will also look good on the battlefield. I am a slow painter and I used about 55 minutes per model. Enjoy the video. Here we have the model ready for painting. Start with the zenithal highlights with a light grey or white spray over a black undercoat. Here I have used grey sear over chaos black. Then we will go over to the contrast phase. The first color I use is wildwood contrast. This will be applied to the pants, the chest armor, the arm guards and the bow. And this is what it should look like when you are done. Next I use Black Templar Contrast. This will go on the boots, the apron under their chest armor, as well as on the belt, undershirt, mask, quiver and any other straps. And this is what it should look like when you're done with this step. Then I move over to Nasdrag Yellow Contrast. This will be used for painting the skirt or kilt. Uh, I don't even know the correct word, but you know what I mean. And the fletchers on the arrows. And this is what it should look like. The next color is Creed Camo Contrast. This will be used to paint in the cloak. When you use this paint, you will see that the paint will pool in certain areas. Don't worry about this, because we're going to clean that up later. Gilliman Flesh is next. And this will be used to paint in the skin on the hands and on the face. We are now done with the contrast paints and move on to the base colors. The first one is a lead belcher. Here we are just painting the blade of the sword or spare tip if the model has one. Next, I use Retributor Armor to paint in the hilt and pummel of the sword, as well as the tips of the bow. Once the model is completely dry, wash the entire model with Serbim Sepia Shade. While this is drying, I usually get a jump start on the base. Here I use Sterling Mud to cover the entire base. If you are only painting one model, you need to wait for the model to completely dry before moving on to the next step. Brine oxide was used to highlight all the brown areas. For the black areas, Corvus Black was applied. You can consider not highlighting the quiver if you want a little more detail in that area. The cloak was highlighted with wog flesh. Do not be fooled of the pooling of the Creed Camo contrast when applying the highlight. Use common sense in regards to where the light naturally will hit. Next is Talarn Sand. This will be used to highlight the skirt and fletchers of the arrows. Cadian Flesh Tone is next. It will be used on the hands and face. Be careful not to hit the eyes, as you want the eye sockets to be dark. Iron Breaker will be used to highlight the sword or spare if any. 
Next, Gianna's gold is used to highlight the hilt and pommel of the sword, as well as the tips of the bow. Next, I move over to finishing off the base, starting with a dry brush of Carrick Stone. Then I use Wraith Bone to do a lighter highlight. This is done to create some more depth on the base, and represents how the ground is different colors. It's always nice to break up the base with some contrast colors. In this case I use green grass tufts. The last thing on the base is to paint the rim. I use a baden black because I think it makes it look a little bit cleaner. I also always seal my models with a matte spray varnish to protect them. I hope you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and have a nice day.